Hello guys, Northwest Trees here. Today I'm going to be continuing the achievement um, tutorial that I worked on prior. Uh, this section is going to be for a little bit more advanced uh, settings and stuff like that. For example, what we're going to be looking at is how to use the code editor to change the background of the achievement window as well as some other fine features that we're going to be working on. So the only thing that we're we're going to be basically changing is how we uh, target the procedure. So if we go into our root tutorial, as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. We're creating a new parent, nothing too different from what we covered in the tutorial prior. Um, the other um, achievements are a little bit different. As you can see that this one's inheriting the main root that we created and the next one is also inheriting the main root where the third one is inheriting the empty paint bucket achievement um, also the thing that you might have noticed was under the empty paint one we have a negative one for the y map location now what this basically does is if there's multiple achievements on say a certain parent for example our root tutorial um, achievement then what we need to do is offset the position of where the achievement is going to be located so this will basically allow us to um, order where the location of the achievements are going to go in our case the paint bucket is going to be below our paintbrush achievement because it's negative one on y-axis so y-axis again is up and down where x is side to side so let's save that um, now the only thing that we need to worry about in procedures is setting it up just a little bit differently if we go in here we are going to be targeting a item being crafted and we're going to have to um, if you wanted to if you have like multiple paths and stuff, you could basically make a really quick um, condition where the player, uh, for example, we need a Minecraft component for a block type and a Minecraft component for a provided item. And we need a logic operator for both of those. If we go like this, and add the wicker what this is going to basically do is test for the provided item being crafted um, is a certain item so if it's the certain item then it's going to basically give the achievement so you might want to do this if you want it to be more compatible with other mods as well as um, for example um, be very specific if you have like multiple achievement uh, routes then you might want to makes it so the item that needs to be crafted is the particular block or item you want. So we're just going to save that and then what we're going to do is do the same for both of these. Now if you're not familiar with how the procedures work you can actually export the um, procedure. I'm just going to select it to my desktop and go test and we're going to save that and we're going to open up our other procedures so this one we're going to select um, when player crafts an item we're going to import our test procedure we're going to just swap out these and now that's all great uh, now this is our second item right so we could just have it so if the player crafts the paintbrush to give this particular achievement but say um, you want to restrict it to if the player has already gained the first achievement now what we can basically do here is if we go to um, logic operators and add a additional if statement place this if statement inside of that one place the if statement on our main thing and then go to player uh, procedures and scroll down where it says has provided entity completed achievement we can select that and we can select our main route 
So because this is on our main root um, achievement line, this needs to check to see if a certain achievement has been uh, done before that particular thing. You could also have a different, um, say, if the player has created a paint bucket. So maybe they have to complete a different path in order to unlock this. It's completely customizable. I'm just going to be showing how to inherit it from the root folder. So this is basically all you need to do. You can just save it. And we're going to do that for the other ones now too. So I'm just going to export this as test2 and update the rest. So for our final um, achievement, what we want to do is import our test one as well, but we're going to be coding it just a little bit differently. Um, for example, it's a filled paint bucket, so we want to make sure that the completed achievement our provided achievement is set to the one prior to it. So for example, um, we might want to make sure that the achievement paintbrush is completed rather than um, the bucket before that. And if you wanted to make sure that multiple achievements were completed, what you can do is actually go to logic and loops or not logic and loops, logic operators, select the light blue one, go and, and we want to place this in here as well as another one. We're actually going to put that on the same line. And we're going to go, is uh, achievement paintbrush completed and is um, empty, paint empty paint bucket completed. And then we're going to drop that down on there. So in that case, we can have multiple um, achievements tested for at the same time and then we're just going to drop that procedure or that achievement into that particular one we're going to click save now that's all great um, however there's a few other things that we can customize and that is going to be under our main root uh, achievement we're going to be changing the background uh, now, the first thing that you want to do, I'm just going to delete this because I'm going to be showing you how, how to do that. Uh, we want to import a block texture and we're going to select where our block texture is so stored. So we're going to go and click tutorial wherever path is for your textures. I'm going to select the background for our um, texture that we're going to be adding. And we're going to unlock this particular achievement. It's our main root achievement for our mod. It also hold, holds the um, background um, code that we need to edit to change the background. So we're going to unlock it. It should change purple to indicate that it's um, in the code editor now. Uh, there also should be a um, like an uh, unlocked icon kind of idea right of, of, on the purple thing there. If it's um, just a regular generated uh, procedure or element, then it's going to have a green kind of indicator that it's a different type. So if you double click on this and go and edit the um, JSON file, not the Java file, the JSON file, which have the curly brackets, not the C, uh, you want to edit that and uh, one thing that you're going to need to know and you can go back to your workspace at any time to figure this out is you're going to need to know your mod element name so if we go to workspace workspace settings and then your mod element ID or sorry your mod element ID you're going to need so in our case it's tutorial underscore mod so if we go back to our tab that we have open. Now there's a couple different things, uh, settings here. The settings are in blue or the purple are, or no, the settings are in purple and the values are in blue. So for the most part, it's not too complicated with the JSON file. All we need to do is change the 
background up here to something else. And how that's done is our mod has its own folder for storing its files in. So it's not going to be stored under the uh, Minecraft directory, it's going to be stored under our mod ID directory. So what we need to do is remove everything before the colon and go tutorial and mod and that's our ID for our mod. So that's going to target textures, blocks, and then the texture, which is where we're going to be where our block textures are stored. So we're actually going to change the block texture name to what we want it to be. So background dot png. And then what we can do is exit out of this, it'll prompt us to save and then click close and save and then we can test it in game. So we're going to start up a world and we're going to try crafting up some of these recipes. Uh, the first thing that we want to do uh, when you start a new world you're not going to have any rule advancements other than what is given to you. Uh, for In our ex uh, example we have created um, some acacia wood so I think we've unlocked some stuff. Um, other than that uh, what we want to do is try crafting something that is not our root thing to see if we get our achievement. As you can see we didn't. So we want to try crafting our root achievement next. And we got our root achievement. As you can see the background has been changed to our texture so we set that up properly. Uh, we also have some advancements that we can see. So one of the things that we're going to try doing is crafting up a bucket and then a paint bucket. So we can do that by crafting just a bucket. We got the achievement for a regular bucket. So let's try crafting that bucket now, or that paint bucket. As you can see, we didn't get any advancement because we didn't uh, unlock the creative artist or the paintbrush achievement. So we're gonna create that first. We're gonna place down the requirements and we're going to right click on that. And we now have that achievement. If we go back and create a empty bucket and then add some paint to it, You can see we have completed the uh, challenge for the paint bucket. So you could add a little bit of experience to the mix. Um, as you can see, we didn't get any experience from completing that, but you can add a little bit extra code. I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So it's always a good idea to test your, pers or your uh, achievements to make sure they all work so people don't get all that far. Uh, when testing this, I forgot to link up the um, the crafted item. So something is crafted. So if that's not set to something, the uh, um, trigger event, then it's not going to work properly. So if you want to give a little bit of experience, what you want to do is go to the player uh, tab and was it player tab or entity? I think it's, maybe it's world management. Yeah, so if you go under world management and then select spawn experience orb at coordinates with experience amount of, and add that to our, just under the uh, achievement when we give the achievement, we can set this to something low like 20 or something like that. That's actually quite high for the amount of experience. Uh, that will give you about two levels, I think. Uh, where um, I think the respawned ender dragon gives you like 500 experience where a wither I think gives you a thousand or something. I'm not entirely sure of how uh, the exact values I would have to look it up but I know the respawned ender dragon uh, gives you 500 experience. So in 1.14 the beast um, or Ravager, or 
I don't know. One of the the new, the new uh, thing that spawns with the raiders is actually exactly 20 experience for dropping. So you probably would want it somewhere around uh, 50 to uh, 1 experience um, when you're creating your procedure. So outside of that, that's all you really need to do um, to give experience when completing a challenge or something like that. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, let me know what you liked about it, and I'll see you guys next time.